Welcome everybody uh, to uh, what's going to be a pretty, uh, man, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> uh, probably a longer episode or a longer live here. I'm not really sure where to start. I don't have any notes. I don't do this professionally. But I'm going to try to start somewhere. Somewhere. Um, please read the description if you're um, watching this. I don't want to seem rude, um, but I'm trying to record this. I might put it on my podcast. I'm not sure. We'll see how choppy it is. But um, as my title says, is this will be commentary on Kevin England's explanations. I didn't know what word to use there. Um, his explanations of treatment-free beekeeping. See, the, the title, if it would have been perfect, it would have been pretty long. It would have been explanations of the treatment-free option uh, in his presentation. Um, if you don't know who Kevin England is, do you even keep bees? Like, do you have... <laughs> Who are you? You pay attention at all, um, or maybe you're just new uh, to it. But Kevin England, you know, for a little bit of backstory, I'm going to be backing all the way up, all over the place. Kevin England um, has Beekeepers Corner podcast, which I listen to for years. Um, not as much lately, just because, like I've said to Kevin and anybody who knows me, I can't, I can't focus on something for an hour or more, or two hours. Sometimes they're long. Um, he does the Beekeepers Corner podcast, has uh, has the beekeeperscorner.org, I think it is. Um, he has this program called uh, some type of mentored management or management mentor. It's kind of a big thing he's been working on for a while. Um, I had him on my show about nine months ago, my show, you know, my little live here. We talked. And as I said in the show, um, I was interested in what he was doing because someone told me that he was uh, going treatment-free or doing treatment-free beekeeping, which is always cool to me. I like to see people do that. Um, let's see, and wh where else can I? What else can I back up and say? Uh, we had a at my local club. We had a beginners beekeeping kind of like a symposium i guess it would be we had several people uh, give presentations on subjects that that they were able to give a uh, presentation on someone would do something about uh you know how to install a package if you bought packages someone did a presentation about hive products like honey propolis wax all kinds of things I did uh, my, of course, a uh, little short presentation about swarm trapping, swarm catching. And Kevin England um, came all the way from Jersey to give his presentation on treatment options is what he, he was, was the part that he kind of picked up to, uh, to talk to the, you know, the new people. And this was cool i mean i got to talk to him um he was going to be talking man i really should have had this uh let me see if i can put this up he was going to be kind of introducing everybody to his managed mentorship program that he has on his website um so <laughs> goodness where do i go so it was his turn to speak this was the first i was hearing about the the managed mentor mentorship program and as i kind of alluded to kevin at the end i said hey, yeah i had a couple a couple things didn't seem right to me I, i'm not really sure what was going on there so i sent an email to kevin probably a month ago now i don't know a month ago i said hey hey i want to do a commentary on your on your program your mentorship program the part about the treatment free part um and i asked was was there any issue with that i didn't know i didn't know if there was any type of copyright problems or maybe you know i don't know i just kind of threw it out there i normally never do that i normally just just <laughs> comment on stuff um but he never got back to me i thought maybe my email might have went to spam or something and maybe didn't get it but that didn't really make sense to me because we've 
We've communicated in email quite a few times. It's not my preferred method of communication, but I think it's his. Um, so I kept putting it off, kind of just waiting, checking my spam. Maybe, maybe he emailed me back and it went to spam. Never found anything. I was just like, man, that's so strange. Very, very strange. I don't know. To me, it's strange. Um, so today I heard um, from someone that, that I was mentioned on the podcast. I'm going to play that clip. And it was just such a weird freak chance that, that I even heard about this podcast. Because, like I said, I have not listened to anyone's podcast in quite a while. Because um, I just can't sit still that long. You know, I just can't. I got too much stuff going on. But it's a great podcast for, for if you, you know, have that kind of time. But let me... um. Let me share the, hopefully this doesn't get too choppy, but I got to share the screen. Um, that's not going to be very cool to look at, but we'll share this. It's just kind of like, it's probably just going to show the player, right? Um, yeah, so it's just a player. I mean, uh, very exciting. <laughs> Let's see, does that make it bigger? Yeah, it's a little player, but I'm not sure if it'll come through if I don't play it this way. So rather than play the whole podcast, it's probably, I don't know, an hour and 45 minutes long. I'm just going to skip all the way to the part where I, where I kind of get permission to talk about this stuff. Um, not trying to make an enemy out of anybody. You know, we're, we're both very, very cool adults. <laughs> um, so hey, I get permission to talk about it. Kind of like, hey, go for it. And then there's some other some other conversation that, I, that I'm going to be stopping this probably several times. So we'll see what happens if it even plays. Bruce Rodriguez wrote in and he's going to do um, commentary. I, I don't know where he's going to take this on my presentation that I made at Burke's association last weekend. I presented a topic that's extremely foreign to me, not to me personally, but to say out loud. If you follow the show, you know I'm doing a low treatment method, which is not treatment free. But I was asked to speak. So I immediately, I immediately, as soon as I heard that, I said, whoa, back up. You know, like if you watch Seinfeld, beep, 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 back up. Because in all the conversations, or I've never, you know, in the our conversation on YouTube, which I can play, I, I should have that, I could cue that up. I never heard low treatment I, I my whole thing was hey let's talk about your your journey i hate using that word into treatment free beekeeping so far you know what let me just go ahead and i'm gonna go ahead and flip over to this um, let me stop that screen share let me let me share this other thing i'll go back to that in a minute i just wanna <laughs> i knew this was going to be choppy um Present, share screen, this one. Because <laughs> I want to know that I'm not crazy, right? Um, just going to play a minute here. Buddy's here recently. Um, I think it was around Hive Lifetime. He's like, did you hear about Kevin England? I'm like, what about him? I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't know at that time. Because I've been terrible at keeping up with podcasts lately. Ever since I got yeah, kicked off too. of a... Uh, Podbean, I just been terrible. He's like, oh, he's he went treatment free. I was said, get out of here. Yeah, he did. So, so then I tried to catch up and I listened to a, to a, some of your past podcasts. And but I'm terrible at keeping my attention span you know, on yeah. you know longer podcasts like we talked about. I'm ter you know over an hour, forget it. I'm done. Um, but yeah, if you could just talk to me a little bit about um, how your treatment free. Uh, beekeeping has been going and maybe first of all why like why would you do something so crazy like that <laughs> well i mean obviously we would all love to be treatment free um you know who who wouldn't like that type of lifestyle uh, you know actually this is years in the making and i'm sure if you've listened to my show enough you've heard me talk about my friend in beekeeping bob Kloss. i'm sure you know who he is yep um Bob and I have been on the journey of beekeeping and training our local club members. And, you know, we went to Malawi together and we've been to 
uh, tons of EAS shows and everything. Well, it's actually Bob's fault. <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to play this too long forever. I'm going to be jumping around here, but I feel like if I said, "Hey, tell me about your treatment-free beekeeping so far," I should have been corrected. I mean, I, I would have been. I would have corrected somebody. Like, no, whoa, hold on a second. I'm not. I didn't, I didn't say treatment-free, dude. I didn't say that. <laughs> what I said was. We're going to be doing low treatments. You know, we're going to do this kind of Megan Milbrath or whatever, which we'll get into even more later. I'm going to put a pin in that. I'm going to use one of one of Kevin's, put a pin in that. I probably never get back to that pin. But um, I would have corrected me um, so that I wouldn't be thinking the whole time that that I'm talking to a treatment-free beekeeper. But so Kevin goes on to talk about how Bob Kloss has been doing treatment free beekeeping for a while he mentions eas um which i learned uh through our conversations uh, after our club meeting kevin and i and some other people were talking and learned that eas has just this horrible kind of militant nazi treating uh way of, they just hate treatment free beekeepers you can't become a master beekeeper through eas if you have any type of um if you even think of treatment free beekeeping as a plausible way to keep bees i learned that like you just can't do it i've heard that most master beekeeping programs you know they just you can just get through and you don't have to talk about that you can just go th but no I, I learned that no that's not the case I've heard many times from through our conversations that in New Jersey you just can't uh, be a treatment-free beekeeper. You can't talk positively about it. You'll you'll get like I don't know, tarred and feathered. It's just such a weird, weird environment, I guess. So that could be part of what's going on. Like maybe, maybe Kevin has to kind of try to. <laughs> speaking weird code to to keep the eas from like i don't know <laughs> hunting him down or something i don't know it's really weird tone that I, it was strange when we were talking about how many times you mentioned that new jersey just isn't having it the state of new jersey i guess I, i'm not sure but let's go back to the uh to the podcast going to be okay let's just let's just play this speak about how you could consider treatment options whether you want to be full-blown treatment or go in a different direction all the way to treatment free and that's what the presentation was about if you happen to know who bruce is you know that he's part of the treatment free community and i see his commentary on how people perceive treatment free and he said to me he was there at the program afterwards that you know maybe one takeaway of what i said so here so let me quickly say i had no idea our conversation was going to be you know it wasn't anything anything that i wouldn't say in front of everybody i would i would say it nothing i say i'm, I'm afraid to say in front of anyone so it doesn't it doesn't bug me i just it was strange for this to be the way that i know that i can talk about this program instead of an email. I, I didn't get it. I was, I'm still going to, I'm sure he'll let me know after this, but so that's why I brought up the conversation about how EAS, they're just a bunch of, <laughs> I, I can't think of a word for them, but that you can't, they're going to, they're kind of corrupt. It sounds like me, like some corrupt Gestapo of, of treating. So you're never going to be able to be a master beekeeper uh, through EAS, if you, I, I've heard from someone that's struggling, you know, for several years and several several attempts to get past the final hurdle, but can't because they just happen to mention treatment free as an option. They're not even a treatment free beekeeper, but they fucked up by saying something positive about treatment free or or something neutral about treatment free beekeeping. Now it sounded like they're never going to be a master beekeeper spending thousand, you know, however much money. I don't know. So much time. It's a weird, weird organization. No, I just messed this up. 
Uh, let me put that back up here. How did I do that? <laughs> That's weird. Okay. Let me make sure I'm still streaming there. Okay, I got that. Let me just hit play. The treatment-free beekeepers will allow their hives to die. And he corrected me and said, no, they're yeah, there I correct to people. let their Boom. hives live. And if some of them die in the process, that's for the greater good. And it made me think, what an interesting take on it. That's not exactly how I said it. That's probably better than the way I would have said it. Because, yeah, I don't, do I let bees die? Like, do I let the bees in the trees around where I live die? No, they, they're selected. I let them live and sometimes they will die. And very often they will die because it's because of beekeepers that cause this problem. So I'm trying to, you know, I, do I think I'm going to reverse it all? No, but I'm not going to contribute to it. So let's continue. And maybe, yes, some of you will accuse that to be a rationalization. But the fact of the matter is, if you can get more and more hives through that process through to survive, without treatments and in a more natural state, then I have to concur that that's the right way to possibly perceive that. And so I think he might take the presentation that I did and offer his own take on my messaging just to clean up what he felt I didn't say right. And I'm okay with that. In fact, if you want to see what I presented, go to bkcorner.org, click on the link for presentations, and it should be one of the top ones there. Ironically, I was kind of asked to speak on a similar note for the talk I'm giving at EIS in July or August. It's in August. I'll be teaching about how to become a responsible treatment-free beekeeper in a, in a roundabout way. Yeah. I'd really like to hear about how that goes, how... First, you have to know what treatment-free beekeeping is. There's no middle ground. There's no, there's no most of the way. There's no like low treat. Low treatment is treatment. It's like you can't be a completely sober former alcohol abuser and be um, mostly non-alcoholic and just have one drink on certain holidays. Or maybe when it, when you really need it during a bad time, you know you can't be a vegan and eat just a little bit of fish here on on certain on, you know once a month or you know what I mean. There there's certain things that that you just don't once you cross over and do the thing, which you're perfectly <laughs> perfectly free to do. You can drink all you want, eat all the meat you want. No one cares. You can treat all the bees you want. You just can't maybe unintentionally misrepresent i mean it's pretty clear what treatment free beekeeping is um so there is no low treat low treatment gets you zero points for treatment free beekeeping it's not um you, what i call it is treatment free until so so if you say hey man i'm totally treatment free unless my mites get really high then i'll treat them and only in that position or I'm treatment, 100% treatment free, unless like this other thing happens. So, so only then will I, you're not, you're, you're just like anyone else. There's no, that's, that's nothing. That's like, you can't be 100% sober unless, um, you know, it's Friday night or something. So it does, again, I'll say it a thousand times tonight and every day. No one cares if you treat your bees. Uh, my only, the thing I do here is point out and try to try to shed light on, as, as he said, or maybe um, clean up a little bit uh, these these misrepresentations, whether they're on purpose. No one really should be doing it on purpose. I don't think it's on purpose. I think people just seriously don't get it. Even people as absolutely way much, much more smarter than me, uh, they still don't get it. That's why I'm constantly having content here. But let's just finish. So interesting that this topic continues to be a topic of interest to beekeepers. 
at least lately, I've been asked quite a bit about that. And it just so happens that with what I'm doing in my local apiary to learn about low treatment, which in summary is I am not putting treatments in the colony that is uh, suspect in its own right <laughs> in the context of what constitutes a treatment, which was one of the discussions we had that day. But in general, I am not putting Apivar and, and those type of traditional treatments in. I will correct the problem if I see it because I do not want a hive to live with disease and so on. But I'm also taking steps to try and put in very good beekeeping local stock, survivor stock, and taking measures to put and keep fresh queens in there, along with uh, splits and other things that just come as part of the normal course of operation. That's a really loose and fast description of low treatment. But I will not let it have disease and pestilence. So see how, see, see that weird, see how that happens? That's called treatment free until. And and I, I always will have a problem with anyone saying, oh, I'm going to tell you how to be a responsible treatment-free beekeeper. What does that even mean? <laughs> the audacity. I, I just got to use that every time. The, the Try not to swear here. Try not to. But if someone were to, <laughs> to come here, this is some fucking beekeeper down the road, to pull up here and ask me about, you know, what I do with my bees or something. Well, are you being a responsible treatment? That dude would be airborne out of here. I mean, it's just not ha it's not gonna go well. Like, to, don't don't tell people uh, the nerve of telling someone that, that does something for a little while, and, and or or even the nerve of just pawning your someone's biases and their their um, prejudices of uh, onto new people. It's 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 audacious. Uh, I don't I don't uh, I don't like it. I'm not, I don't have the biggest vocabulary, but oh, it would tick me the hell off if someone. Oh, well, you're not being responsible. No, I am being responsible. <clears throat> I'm doing what what should be done. I'm I'm improving. I'm taking taking a bunch of shit and and letting the best rise up. And propagating from that, I'm not doing the exact opposite. So I'm also not playing around, low treating this or like dabbling and treating that or or some type of natural treating this. No, just it's all treatments. Is this is this sample up here done? And some of my colonies, just for notation, that are in the beekeeping apiary for the association, they're being treated in a conventional path monitored and treated. So I have kind of a hybrid situation going on as I'm learning my ways, taking it slow, step by step. Anyway, Bruce, have at it. Have a good time. I'll be interested to see what your take on it is. And I should say that one of the things I think about is whenever you put something out, you put it out there. People are going to weigh in on it, whether you like it or not, whether it's positive or negative, they're going to weigh in. And so the best that you could do is put your stuff out there, like I've done in this episode, and let people look at it for its merit, and they can take it and use it however they want. Okay, I think I've rambled for the last 15 minutes. Thank you if you stayed this long, and I will end the show as I do customarily. Like our beloved bees. When beekeepers go together, we can accomplish great things. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Beekeeper's Corner Pod. Okay. So finally got, got one of my tabs taken care of. I got, I got a whole bunch of them going across here. Um, yeah, I'm trying to just, you know, I just, I, I can't help it. I get a little, little, uh, <laughs> little uh, heated up talking about talking about uh treatment suppose i'm putting quote treatment free because man when when it just gets when it's so easy to understand and and people are just not getting it or explaining it correctly i just uh, i did boggles my mind all right so that's out of the way he said and what he said is true 
you know, you produce something, you put it out there, or look at mine, I just turned the thing on and just started yakking. You put it out there and, yeah, people are going to, um, they're going to respond to it. They're going to take it however they want to. So anyway, let's get to this treatment options um, thing here. Share the screen. Let me put this treatment out. I don't think I have to go back to the YouTube video because it's freaking long. And nobody nobody wants to watch me on YouTube less than me. And maybe there's a few people, but so this is let me um I want to tell people, hey, if you let, if you want to check out the um bkcorner.org presentations, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Um whole bunch of presentations. So many podcasts. He's been doing this podcasting thing for so long. Um, just check it out. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying the treatment free part. It's just not correct. So, as you can see on the screen here, I um, I skipped way towards the end. Okay, I just went right to the alternatives for treating because the first part is all all about beekeeping, really. I mean, it's just all about beekeeping. And during the um, oral part of the presentation, when Kevin was up there talking, he pretty much began by saying, hey, uh, and I agree with this part. He says some people can treat perfectly, do everything perfect, and all their bees die. Or, or you'll have someone who doesn't treat, doesn't do this, does everything wrong, um, and, and all their bees live, or most of them live, or something like that. And that's 100% true. <laughs> There's certain YouTubers on here right now who just recently um, have, like, famous mentors, and, you know, things happen. I don't have nobody famous. I don't have anybody showing me anything. Um, so you can, just, you can be the best beekeeper. You can do all kinds of things. Bees are just going to live or die sometimes. And then later in this presentation several times which was which was my the first thing that made my hair and my neck stand up was was when um the present presenter kevin would say well now it's too late to do this treatment now your bees are dead you know and i just thought man that was a weird <laughs> that's a weird uh turn from the first thing which is where they could live or die the the second part of the presentation was very eastern apicultural society toned you know your bees are going to die um if you don't get your apivar in there or something or whatever treatments he was talking about i'm not going to go through all those there was no um if i was a new beekeeper in the audience for this part i would have been shitting my pants because i would just i would have been treating my bees big time if i heard this presentation it would have scared me <laughs> let me see how can i make this bigger again um all right, there, I'll make it a little bigger. All right, let's look at some of this. Oh. Alternatives to the conventional treating management style. So now, the treating part, A+, plus, perfect, I guess. I mean, I don't think any treater would look at the scheduling of all the treating and all the weird you know, charts, there's a bunch of charts, you know, Randy Oliver's charts, looking at the mites and counting all that shit. They would look at that and say, oh, that's that's great stuff, you know, perfect treating. And the fucking bees are still going to die anyway. But here's the alternatives, I guess. And this is the part I was really interested in. I'm like, cool, I can't wait to hear. And first of all, he's been treatment-free beekeeping and, and uh, you know, I had him on to talk about this treatment-free beekeeping. Sounded like it was doing great. And then, then I hear see this. So we'll read along. Small disclaimer. And the, the language is <laughs> discussing a treatment-free esque approach. Okay, hold on. Discussing treatment-free esque approaches are like discussing climate change. So what the hell is that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. We should just stick to the facts. Uh, is there a discussion about climate change? I, I don't know. There's a myth, myth, mystical quality to it. 
this presentation is a philosoph philosophical ex exploration. God, I can't even speak. Of ways to be more sustainable. There's that buzzword, sustainable, all the time. It's so burned out. It explores... Okay. It explores adoption of treatment-free constructs and is more of an exploration, not a literal how-to. I don't know. Maybe I may have went backed up a little bit too much. Maybe I didn't go far enough ahead. <laughs> but I got time tonight. All right. Uh, do you have what it takes, I guess, to be a treatment-free beekeeper? Um, some people go treatment-free from the beginning. That's what I did. Um, and take what comes. They align to a practice and simply may not have any pragmatic experience with treating because they've never considered it. And, and they make it work. I mean, I guess. I've never treated. I don't. I know what people do. Which I've seen enough videos. I know what goes on. I'm just not interested. Um, some fail and quit. Never consider treating. It's just not in their DNA. And you know what? I, it, it annoys the living shit out of me when people um, get all kind of bummed that someone quits beekeeping. Like, don't people. If you don't like something, <laughs> don't do it. Um, I tried to go out for football in high school. I told, I was telling my kid about this. I wasn't that good. I I could tell right away that I just was wasn't liking it. Um, many people are good, and I quit, and I really didn't feel bad about it. I, you shouldn't feel bad about quitting stuff. Don't don't feel bad about quitting beekeeping. Just feel bad you wasted money, I guess. Uh, some wish to switch, but are apprehensive. They practice treatment free bee. Uh, they practice treatment beekeeping, but harbored a curiosity for treatment free. I don't even remember this part. Treatment free chicken and egg. See now, there was not all this this language. Um, I, I don't recall this kind of language at, during the treatment part at the beginning of this. It was very. It was very clear. Um. So first, this is funny. Like this is a weird. <laughs> be a competent beekeeper first, even if that means being a treatment beekeeper first. I mean, you know, it's freedom of freedom of speech. You can say that, I guess. Um, I, I don't even know how to take that. Competent. There, there's plenty of people who start and treat and and do everything. And there's certain beekeepers, like I said on YouTube, who you can see their videos. Basically, anybody who blocked me on YouTube, they're losing a ton of bees. Um, a lot of, <laughs> I don't know what the correlation is there, but um, they're losing a ton of bees. They're all treating beekeepers. They've all been doing it for years. Um, so this is just, this is just fear, fear tactics here. Um, you cannot become a competent beekeeper if your bees die. That's just. That's just pure judgment, weird judgy language to me. Some people don't have a whole bunch of colonies. They might have one or two or three. And just in, anybody knows they can die for many reasons and whether you treat or not. Just like Kevin said at the beginning of his whole thing at, at our club. Um, here's the part that I've said many times is an absolute fallacy to say that if you only have a few colonies, the treatment free is just so risky. It's so risky because if you only have two and they both die, now you two are dead and that's so hard. It's not hard. It's not hard to recover from that. If you just put the tiniest bit of effort into swarm catching, swarm trapping, especially if you live in a place like New Jer Jersey where supposedly there's 500 colonies per square mile, you know, of bee, there's just so many beekeepers. Like, I thought, I, I always say, like, beekeepers just think that everybody has bees. We, not everybody in the world has bees, or everybody in your state. Um, you can't just say, oh, I got caught bees from neighbors on the road. None of my fucking neighbors have bees. <laughs> like, they don't all keep bees. Um, it's, yeah, it's extremely popular, but it's not like everybody has bees. But if you're in a place where supposedly 
so many people have bees. Swarm trapping and swarm catching is so easy to replace one, two, three, five, seven colonies. It's so easy and it's, and to get them for free. It's a joke. Um, if if bees were like, say, horses, right? And you only kept two horses, but you just let them die. Yeah, you know, you can't go catch a horse. You know, maybe you can uh, some places, but you can't just go catch a damn pig. Or I mean, some places you can. Uh, or a cow, okay? Yeah, that's real livestock that you have, have to buy. Um you have to take care of it's going to die. And and if to have one or two cows and then they die, yeah, that's a bitch to replace. So maybe you do need a whole herd so you can, you can breed them or whatever. But bees aren't that way. I, I really don't see any reason. There's no number where, where treatment-free beekeeping gets uncomfortable in my mind. Um, if you have 100, you know, you can really play with, with uh, your numbers then or... or because you can go ahead and lose 50, 60% of them and still split back to normal to your, to whatever number you want. And also catch bees and go on calls and do swarm. I just, I think just this, this idea that, that you're just going to buy all your bees every time. And that's why it's so bad. It's just so lazy and so lame to me. And that's my judging this, you know. <laughs> you just, so to me, no. Treatment-free beekeeping is not risky for two hives. Like, the only part you're risking is that they die at the very end, at winter time. The whole beekeeping part, the whole getting honey, is not really that affected. And they might live, so that's the part that's just so... It boggles my mind that people don't understand that. I just went around today with with the buddy looking at feral colonies yeah one was dead um the other ones were all alive nobody touched them let's see fact new treatment free beekeeper struggle that's weird to put after the word fact a fact is very when you really think about it what is a fact i mean i know what i i know what a fact is I mean, anybody knows what a fact is, but that's a weird statement to put after the word fact. Because struggle, the word struggle is relative. What someone calls a struggle may not be a struggle to someone else. So you can't have something relative and call it a fact, you know. Like, uh, the, the plate is hot. Well, hot to who? Hot to somebody who handles hot plates all the time? No, it's a fact. It's hot. Well, what is it? It's probably very hot to like a a toddler who, who you know who doesn't touch hot stuff, but to someone who works in a restaurant, um, you know, it's nothing. I'll pick up a very hot plate. It's relative. There's no facts about that. You know, I'm nitpicking, but I, I have to. Um, so fact: new treatment free beekeeper struggle. Do they? I never struggled. I've never struggled. Um, some people do struggle because they just, they're not fit to, to do beekeeping, period, let alone be treatment-free beekeeping. Um, new treatment-free beekeepers often report frustra frustration with failure. Who, who are they reporting this to? Where? Um, uh, that goes for any beekeeper. New or a shit. Very experienced. It's, exp it's expressed repeatedly, and it is a tough way to get ahead. See what I mean? It's, it's just a weird... Um, it's so biased. <laughs> I mean, my buddy Kevin here is going to be kind of hot with me, but this is so biased, which is fine because I'm biased also, but I, I can't... I would never... I can't teach something that I'm very biased against. If I did, if I had to, tea, I would let someone else write this part. Just, to, there's no reason to, to to drag it out. Just just get to it. It's about selection. It's about selection. It's about uh, not. It's about having fun. Like that's what treatment for beekeeping is about. Is it? It's about selection. It's about enjoying yourself. It's about not being a damn chemist. Like micromanaging everything. 
that that is not enjoyable. The, that's a fact. Um, it's about not contributing to bad to bad genetics. Well, no treatment free beekeeper uh, contributes to bad genetics by catching the swarms that are already in their area and just keeping them. So labeling treatment free. Oh man, wow! I thought I thought I was in the woods with the first part. Um, the ambiguity. There's no. There's very tiny little bit of ambiguity about just weird, just very small things, which I'll get to in some other discussion once they come up here. So, like beekeepers that treat. Treatment-free beekeepers have their own factions. Okay, so we split up into factions, I guess. But no, 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 we don't. So that, off the bat, that's wrong again. Um, because it, this is all a false premise here, that there's a such thing called pure treatment-free, that people forgo any form of treatment. It's not. It's not pure. It's just treatment free. If you if you don't do any treatments, so so here's a definition of a treatment. It's not. It's not that I made it up. <laughs> a treatment is what you do to intentionally fight a pest, and that pest is going to be varroa mites for now until trip you know tropolay labs gets here. Beetles aren't really a big deal. Do I treat for beetles? No. Or wax moths or something, or bears or goddamn raccoons. Th those aren't those aren't um, you know like a, a a pest that they're an animal. You know that's annoying. But um, so when 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 he says here no splits, that's not no splits. There, there's no part of treatment free beekeeping that says you can't split your bees <laughs> like that's just totally wrong like in the spring you know i'm making nukes i'm splitting bees i'm trying to keep them from all going up in the trees it's not it's not done in a way to try to fight mites you know in the spring mite levels are low anyway plus i don't really care what the mite levels are but but no splits is just a weird thing to have there that's just beekeeping now now, do I do a mite test and see that they're really high, and then I decide to split them? First of all, I don't know who does that. A lot of people say that. Who does that? Who sees a colony that's so high in mite, mite count, and they just start splitting them? <laughs> what the, what's that going to do? It's not going to do anything. It's going to make a bunch of weak little uh, mini colonies that are just going to die anyway. I, I don't know where that dumb shit came up into, into like a treatment-free way of beekeeping. It says no soft chemicals. Well, what is that? What is a soft chemical? Everything is a chemical. Hard and soft, again, are going to be relative and just... Is is bleach a hard chemical? Is, is oxalic acid a hard chemical? I, they're all chemicals. No, no one cares. They're treatments. So, so they have nothing to do with treatment-free beacon. It doesn't matter. Soft chemicals are... No packages. Like, what is that? You can, if you want to buy packages, like, that's lazy. And, and yeah, it's not smart. And you, for all the reasons I just went into on my live the other day, um, yeah, packages are a waste of money. They're, they're just lazy. Um, you're, you're just lining fat cat pockets. Um, so, yeah, buying packages, in my opinion, is just dumb. But there's no, but are you treating them? You could you could be a treatment free beekeeper with packages if you want to. It may not go very well. It says feral bees rule, etc. I mean, free bees are great. Okay. Um, why would you want to spend a whole bunch of money on some treaters bees and then? And then select, try to select farm. I, I wouldn't buy a bunch of poodles and try to breed a, a Malamute sled dog team with a bunch of poodles, right? So, no. 
I'm going to go to get the, the things that are already doing the thing. Oh, wrong thing. Um, so let's see. Where am I at? Please read Please read the description of this video real quick. Um, the James Bond method, live and let die, period. I mean, kind of. It's weird to see a, a treating beekeeper I'm make, kind of lay these rules out. But um, the James Bond method, I never really got why what that even is. It's just keeping bees. It's just keeping bees doing every normal thing that a normal beekeeper has done since the 1500s, 1600s, or since Langstroth made, invented his uh, frames and everything. Just doing all that same shit, just not treating for mice. It's like, I don't know what's so hard to understand about that. So now, here on this page, Kevin um, invented this... This thing called moderate treatment free. So I guess my problem is not what does treatment mean? What does free mean? What does a hyphen and then free mean? If I tell you some this is sugar free, you know, you're you have diabetes. This is sugar free, okay? Here. Here. <laughs> but it just has a little bit of sugar in it. Well then motherfucker, it is not treatment free or sugar free. You gotta you gotta really understand what the hyphen free means, okay? Um, let's say I want uh, a smoke free room at a hotel. I don't, I don't know, I'm just making shit up. Smoke free does not mean you can just smoke a little bit in it. There's no you can't moderately smoke in there. <laughs> um, please, everybody, all beekeepers on these channels and making content, knock this fake ends this halfway stuff off um yeah moderate treatment more let's be more lenient no hard chemicals but natural products are are but natural products are natural and therefore not harmful and allowed that makes no sense Kevin <laughs> natural products are natural is that what we're doing now no, I got to read that again because that hurt. No hard chemicals. So we already discussed that there's no hard and soft chemicals. It's just, plus it doesn't matter. If it's being used as a treatment, a, a treatment-free beekeeper doesn't, is not interested. It, it interferes with selection for, for survival, for, for the fittest specimens. But natural products are natural and therefore not harmful. No, 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 no. Um, cyanide is perfectly natural. Um, e. coli is natural. Um, should I go on? They're all natural. Natural does not mean therefore not harmful and allowed. No. Doesn't mean not harmful. That whole thing makes no sense. So then look at this. Sometimes even, even biodynamic <laughs> beekeeping, another, another damn joke if I'm even thinking of the, what I'm thinking of. Um, biodynamic beekeeping methods come into play. Essential oils and practices are, are allowed. It's nothing about what's allowed. Let me go back to that. Let me put a pin in that. It's not, this is allowed, that's allowed, Bruce Rodriguez allows this, it's not the treatment-free Facebook group allows this and that. No one, no one cares, you're allowed to do whatever the hell you want. No one's uh, sitting there saying, no, you, you're not allowed to do this. All I'm saying is it's unacceptable <laughs> to misrepresent. This is... To misrepresent what treatment-free beekeeping is, it's also, I wouldn't say not allowed, but I'd say it's really silly. Like, for example, Fitbit Beekeeping, the one I'm always clowning on, that one channel. Um, always talking about they're treatment-free. They're not. They're, they're totally not. They're totally <laughs> just treating beekeepers. Um, so many of them. So it, it looks dumb, you know, it, when, when people say that, that they're treatment-free, but they're not. Um 
biodynamic. I don't know. No, essential oils and practices are, are allowed. You're always allowed to put all the essential oils in your hive. You can just put whatever you want in there. It's totally allowed. You're just not a treatment-free beekeeper. That's all I'm saying. It's, not, it's allowed. You can do whatever you want. So just like I can eat all the steak I want, okay? I just can't call myself a vegan or vegetarian. Am I allowed to eat meat? Oh, yeah, of course. But it looks dumb if I say I'm a vegan and I'm sitting there eating a porterhouse. Um, okay, so I have I have Pete Grigley here clarifying for me because uh, now it makes sense. Biodynamic beekeeping is much more stringent than treatment-free. You can't use anything, can't feed, can't split, make queens. Yeah, I don't even... What would that even be? What would, that's just a weird biodynamic. So wait, you can't use anything. Can't feed, can't split. So that, that probably just, to me, that just means the bees are in a tree somewhere. They're in, they're in a box. There's no friend. You're just not touching them. So to me, those are just, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's, I guess that's, those bees aren't being treated, but that's also not beekeeping. So that's what, that's what it is. When you have bees that you just don't touch, um, or they're in they're in a log, they're in your wall, it's not beekeeping. It's just there's bees there. They're like a, a garden decoration or a yard or you know they're decoration for your property. And there's nothing to me. That's a swarm factory. I hope their neighbors call me. That's fine. Anybody who puts bees into a box or a tube or or anything and doesn't do anything to them, they're not contributing anything bad it's a freaking uh invasive pest so not hurting anything you ain't getting honey you know you ain't, you're not really a beekeeper if you have bees just that you just have in a log somewhere but there's nothing wrong with that but that's not even what we're arguing about so so let me see if that makes sense here from what kevin's saying oh it says essential oils so yeah i don't I don't see people putting essential oils in logs. Um, all right, so let me let me scroll down a little bit. I'm trying to keep this, you know, adult. I'm just I'm just not very adult, I guess. So here we further, Kevin, who I thought was treatment free beekeeping, um, was just maybe he was maybe he's just trying not to piss off that regime the eastern apicultural society um because apparently they'll just tar and feather you and run you out of the state what what a weird group of people that would be so that would be that way but anyway so here's this is what a successful um, treatment for beekeeper does they have to have the right mix of conditions right bees feral survivors and hygienic good stock is a bonus. I mean, okay. I, I don't know what bees I have. They're, they're the ones that I catch. They're the ones that survive. Um, yeah. Are they hygienic? See, now, now you get to where, like, we're moving the goalpost here. No, no, they can't just survive. They have to also do all these other tricks. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't... Yeah, and if they're going to survive without treatments, yeah, they're good stock. This is that's very obvious. You need a great location. No, um, these bees survive. Bees are just absolutely adaptable to anything. They need. They do need their basic needs for foraging met, but who keeps bees in a place that where it's like it's just all parking lot? <laughs> who that would? Of course, that's for any. Any beekeeper. It's just all parking lots and damn nothing. And just grass. Should they even have bees there? I don't know. It's up to them, but they're just going to feed them all the time. Um, but not a great location. My location is terrible. In the very video that I talked with Kevin about that I had, uh, that I showed the clip of, I explained how terrible where I live right now is. Um, could benefit from, benefit from isolation and control. It, what this whole list here is doing is 
absolutely squeezing out anybody new because they're going to look at this list and go, holy shit. Um, let's see. Well, first of all, I'm so new. There's no way I'm going to get feral survivors. What even are they? I don't even know about hygiene. hygiene. Oh, and I don't have a perfect location because I live in the suburbs somewhere. So, oh, no, now I need isolation. Oh, goodness. So I don't have isolation because there's all these beekeepers around me. So this is just a way of just pushing everybody out of treatment-free beekeeping. If you had to meet all these requirements, you might as well just go to sleep and forget about it. Experience and knowledge in bee biology. Uh, of course you need that. And almost nobody has that. Has that. Uh, they only know about beekeeping. They don't know about bees. And internal biology and all that, yeah, maybe that'll help. Good luck with... I, I would flunk an internal bee physiology test. It's just not... I don't know. Uh, perseverance as a beekeeper and the right constitution. I guess. I mean, like, how about maybe you just kind of really like beekeeping? <laughs> it's not a freaking war. You know, you're not in a fight. Um, oh, here, I didn't even, my eyes didn't even focus on the last one here. Let's start at the beginning. Um, a successful treatment-free beekeeper is willing to stand by and let bees die for the greater good. That is so weird phrasing. <laughs> maybe I would have rephrased that to say... Um, a treatment-free beekeeper um, knows the difference between a loss and culling of unfit genetics, and doesn't take it personally, and doesn't linger on it, and get the get their feelings hurt. Just standing by and let bees die sounds so. The wording is weird to me. Um. Yeah, you, you should know. You should know something about not just bee biology, but just general field biology and just um just ecosystems and and heredity just things and selection like that's the main thing for the greater good i guess treatment free benefits i don't know if i went this far as i was preparing for this it probably looks like i have zero preparation for this Let me see if there's any comments here that I've got to put up. Um, hey there. Uh, treatment free. So, the benefits. Supporting survivor stock. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you're... I don't know why more people don't understand this, but... Yeah, you have your apiary, right? You have your place where your bees are at. But for me, my apiary doesn't stop at the road or at the property line to my neighbor, it goes out into the woods and it goes even further and it goes in every direction. It goes in the whole foraging uh, area because there's a whole bunch of feral connies out there and they're all mixing and mingling with my bees and, and we're, we're trading genetics. So, but, but according to people who teach about treatment-free beekeeping, they think that because you that when you have one in two colonies in your yard that you're the that you're supposed to come up with this bulletproof line of bees with two three colonies in your in your yard like you're supposed to just come up with some species of your own. No, you're just you're just kind of participating in that in that whole gene pool. You're catching some of those bees. You're seeing if they're any good. If they got what it takes, they may or may not. If they don't, then you catch some more of those bees and you keep them again and you just. You just don't keep at throwing shit into them. Like you don't just don't keep buying packages and, and mixing them in there. That's a weird way to to go about it, and I think that's the wrong way. Um, a benefit is you foster good genetics. It's kind of like the exact same thing as the first thing. A benefit is only the strong survive. That that doesn't make sense. Um, a benefit is faster evolution. Uh, let's see. There's an asterisk there. So what does that mean? There is a great debate about this phenomenon. No, there's not a debate about that. We will let it be. Okay. Um, faster evolution. So, artificial selection, which is what beekeeping is, or selective breeding, 
there, there's several different ways of selecting. There's there's where you're focusedly doing it. Um, you're participating in it, in it as a human being, interfering in it. That's that's selective breeding. That's artificial selection also. Evolution with a capital E, evolution by natural selection is not the exact same thing. That's uh, Evolution by natural selection is what happens over long spans of time out in the woods somewhere or just not on purpose. It's why we have 10,000 different types of bees that all came from a single... Um, common ancestor that's evolution it's not evolution doesn't happen in your backyard it's it's selective breeding so just to clear that up because that should be probably a capital e and then it should be followed by by natural selection uh so a treatment free benefit is less labor and expense well that's absolutely right that's like <laughs> by a long shot I, i'm watching a youtube videos some dude with a damn near 200 colonies um, knocked down to I don't even don't even want to say it, but here here I I can go into winter with a hundred free all free hundred percent free, sold as many as I possibly could, still got a shit ton of freebies, they could all die it wouldn't even matter because I, they're they're free so, um and I'm not even mentioning like, vape, apparatuses and. And all that bullshit, chem all those treatments and, and whatever all the other ones are, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. I know they're not cheap. But, yeah, okay, you got us. You got us there. Less labor and expenses. expenses Because I can go through testing all them hives so many times and doing so many treatments and retreating and retesting and recounting. For what? <laughs> for what? Just to ruin my gene pool and... and and still have a shit ton of bees die. Um, uh, treatment free benefit avoids harming the bees with treatments. Uh, I mean, I guess I, I wouldn't. Most treatments people do, it doesn't seem like it really. It seems like if they're done correctly, it maybe doesn't kill them. It looks like it totally tortures them, though. I mean, you got to block them in with a towel. You're you're basically fumigating them to where they're... I mean, if you want to think of bees as your little kitty cats and your little puppy dogs, and there you are, there you are fuming their eyeballs out, and they're <laughs> you're just, like, locking them in, and then as soon as you pull out the towel, they're all just going to pour it out. Hey, whatever. Um, and I've seen people killing their queens and having to requeen after doing treatments and watching the temperature and that goes wrong Ugh, you guys can have that all, all treaters can just have that so yeah i guess you could harm the bees with treatments you're never gonna you're never gonna like pesticide kill your bees by not treating them you know mites might kill them because they're just crap bees but if you catch a ton of bees you don't have to worry about that Huh, more natural and in harmony with the with the natural order of things. I mean, okay, that's not why. I mean, I don't care, but am I a natural person? I mean, I guess. I love nature. I love ecosystems, and I love bugs and bees, and I love all that stuff. Nature is so cool to me, but I'm not going to be out there hitting a gong with a friggin' stick, <laughs> doing all that crazy stuff. Um I'm not trying to be, I'm not in tune with nature, you know, shit, I would die in nature. <laughs> How much more is there? Oh, goodness. What did I get myself into? Uh, hybrid approaches. So there's different, uh, different hybrid approaches going a different way from the conventional treating pest. So that's where, that's where the, the, the goalpost gets moved again. They'll say, oh, well, this is treating, but this is over here. This is not conventional treating but it's just this other treating it's all treating man it's all just treating it's all interfering with selection and producing shitty bees then he brings up megan melbrath everybody's sweetheart megan melbrath dr megan melbrath um she wrote this thing called uh to war treatment free which i did a whole um i did a whole response to that anybody listening you want to hear something 
probably some some good work of mine. It was years ago, but look on my um, type in the search sometime. Type in Swarmstead. Um, really, really Megan. I think that's what the Titan title was called. Really Megan. And I have one that's really Randy and really. Oh, I guess I thought it was funny at the time, but talk about a weird write up that was. That was just like stomping on kitty cats and puppies. It was a really strange. Dead wrong, and and I talked all about it. Also, the toward treatment free approach. Here's the everybody misses this, but you're never. No one's gonna question Megan Milbrat. They just <laughs> not gonna get into it. Um, so they have this this hybrid approach, right? Where they they treat the ones that need it, but they don't treat the ones that don't need it, and then they breed from the ones that don't need it because. Well, let me read it first. Dying hives is cruelty. You're, you're a caretaker of livestock. I love this. Dying hives impact health, healthy hives, neighbors, and any of your potential survivors. So the, let's see the proof of that. It sounds good. So the cruelty part, here we go again with more. Um, it's just kind of opinion. Um when things die that aren't fit, that's cruel. Like, so so when a hawk comes down and eats a rabbit, is that cruel? Um, or, or or a cheetah eats a gazelle, is that cruel? Think, things kill other things. It's just, that's how it is. You can't stop it all. I can't save every, I can't save every mouse from my cat out in the yard. Um... You are a so here's that this statement. You are a caretaker of livestock. I always read it with that tone because it's so like, it's so like pointing your, it's so like <laughs> wagging their finger in your face. You're a king. You have the responsibility. Oh, man, it just makes me just want to. <laughs> it pisses me straight off. Um, dying hives impact healthy hives. Well, then all my bees should be dead. Kevin and Megan and, and Randy, all my colonies should be dead then. Because I, as we said earlier, I stood by and let the, let some bees die. Let them crash. Why aren't all my bees dead? <laughs> Why? Because it doesn't, it sound the whole thing where some crashing hives kill everybody around you. Bullshit. Just not true. Um, my neighbors... And my potential survivors. You know what? If I have um, some colonies crashing and they're and they go ahead and cause some other colony to crash, well, then that's not a survivor then, because if the other two next to that one survive perfectly and are booming, those are the ones that I want, not the ones that get that get secondhand crashed by some other colony. It's bullshit. It, it'll never make sense to me. It only it only makes sense on paper. And it only makes sense when you're trying to scare the shit out of people. But it's just not true. Uh, the principle is that you have to treat in order to go treatment free. Monitor and treat those that exceed thresholds and breed from the rest. Use the tree behinds as stock to requeen and make it. So that makes so much. That sounds so perfect, right? So we're gonna we're gonna save them all. Like nobody's gonna die. <laughs> we're gonna. Count everybody, count all the mites on everybody, and treat these over here. So they're never going to have any crashing, any of them crashing around them. There's never going to be that major pressure on anybody. But they just think we're dumb when they say things like that because they're they're not. They know damn well that that mite levels can be affected by so many different random things, and. Just to test them is just strange because if you're doing it the way Randy Oliver says, you have to go test the bees that are in a certain part of the hive because that's where the mites are. So doesn't anybody ever see how weird, how, how it doesn't make sense to go looking for where they are, right? And then scoop those bees, test them, and then by the numbers of, the, of that scoop where you went right to where they all are, now you're going to attribute that number to your entire colony? If that's true, then why 
why not scoop from the bees from the honey super or from outside frames or something or on capped brood frames you know what i mean you're not going to get the average of how many mites are in a hive by focusing on the parts where the mites are at very sneaky very very sneaky way of of just trying to trick everybody into treating well the center brood frames your nurse bees have this amount of mites so we got to treat everybody and also this idea that that somehow these certain bees don't need treating. Well, they never tell, tell us how many of those ones that didn't need treating and that they don't treat die. Or the ones that, that they did treat die. You never hear about that. And how, how many of the ones that had a high threshold of mite or had a high mite count, how many of those would have survived without treatment? The ones that you went and rescued and now you, now you smashed their queen and could possibly be recleaning them with genetics from some hive that just happened to have a lower count for a different reason. It's just, it's so arbitrary and strange. She's been doing it so long. Uh, by now, nobody should be treating anything up there. They should be 100% treating free, but I guarantee you they're still doing the exact same thing. Uh, that they did from the beginning. Meanwhile, here I am just letting letting the good ones, you know, survive, splitting from them, and and having the maximum number of bees that I want, or too many. Like I'm always having too many, and I'm just a dumbass hobbyist. It's just just strange. I think my brain is probably a little fried after all of this. Does uh, this continue more about? So what do you do with the duds? Make survivor hives? Do not breed from them, but use their resources to help other hives thrive. Yeah. See, there's... So a colony that has a high mite load, you, you're just using the bulk bees. I mean, okay, it, it does make sense on paper, but I, I really like those bees that, that get their ass kicked and still survive. Uh, the, this part is just too, it's, this way is just too tidy. It sounds too perfect. And, uh, and I'm sure whoever buys bees from these people still treats them. Um, I'm sure they do. Uh, don't condemn the bees. See, here we go again. Don't condemn the bees. For, this is basically all from that Megan Milbrath paper. This sounds very familiar. Well, the article. Don't condemn the bees for bad queen genetics. Embrace them. Hug your little puppy dog. <laughs> Breed good bees in the hives that are coping well with mites. And then make daughters from those good colonies. Yeah, I do that. And that's what I do. <laughs> um, using those daughters, systematically requeen your factory hives with desired genetics. This is win-win. It's really not when it's it, it, it works and it's it probably works for them and it sounds good, but Nobody's getting, like, they're not really getting put to the test. I'd like to know how many of the the, the colonies that just didn't need treatments because their numbers were just so low, how many of them died from something else? You know, they could die from some, some, some other thing. Or maybe the counts weren't accurate. I don't know. It's just, it's tedious. Again, I have no interest in doing it. Um... Treatment-free practice. You'll need to be able to tolerate losses. Here we go again with losses. The selection means things are going to die. It's not a loss if you didn't pay for it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna die by that. <laughs> I just, you're playing with houses money. As we've been covering, if you do not treat for for, for varroa. Your bees will face a severe challenge. So here we go. To cover the spread, it seems you need a lot of hives. When you have a lot of hives and some make it through, you can recover and expand. Every few years, you might take a beating. It requires a dedication and is not immune to setbacks. In time, however, those who stick with it can come out on the other side. So 
Wait, is that this is still part of the? Is this still part of the um, Megan Milbrath way of doing it? You're still gonna take a beating if you're doing it that way. That that weird hybrid way. You better not be taking a beating because that would make no sense. If you if you have it so figured out and it just works out, and you still take beatings. Um, yeah, that wouldn't make sense. You should be almost never taking a beating. Um, you don't need a lot of colonies to enjoy treatment-free beekeeping. All you need to do, in my opinion, is know how to to catch swarms. It's very easy. There's a billion videos. Um, it requires dedication. It's not immune to setbacks. What 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 is what isn't? What is immune to setbacks? I don't know. Considerations. Wow, god damn, how much more is this? Oh well, I'm making a I'm doing a long episode. Um here what what did this say? It said treatment free considerations to monitor or not to monitor, personal preference. There seems to be a divide in the treatment free world as to the value. Some feel they can learn from knowing the mite dynamics and others are non pleasant. To me, whatever. I'd say personal preference, whatever. I think my counting is just silly. Um, yeah, maybe you can see one that's absolutely crawling. But, again, you're, you're purposely searching for the part where Randy Oliver has determined that's where the most mites are. So, And then you're extrapolating that to the whole colony. See what I mean? You're going to the crowded part, the mite crowded part, and saying, this is your mite numbers. This doesn't make sense. You should you should be able to take a scoop from, say, four different spots inside of a big colony. You know, the honey super, the freaking outside frame, the some nurse bees, some bunch of drones, and just mix them all together, and then you'll, you'll have an average. I don't see anyone doing that. If you want to, I mean, I, I don't have any desire to, to, to worry about mites. Oh, God, here's my favorite thing ever. I'm, probably if somebody saw this, they're like, oh, wait till Bruce gets to the treatment. Free doesn't equal a bee haver. Oof, if you have bees, you have an obligation to inspect and ensure that your bees are free from disease. Really? <laughs> The audacity again. Holy shit. Um, oh, really? I have an... Ob I'm, I'm obligated to, to inspect. I mean, who keeps bees and doesn't inspect their bees? It's just, what the fuck do you have bees for? Yeah. And I have to ensure that they're free from disease. Which disease are we talking about? Um, American foul brood? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, you got me there, but what else? What what other ones are we afraid of? Um, I'm supposed to ensure that they're free from all disease? It's not possible. Are you saying they have to be mite free and free of just what other what other things are we worried about? I I got to go to the cheaters to find out what we're worried about anymore because. Yeah, European foul brood will happen here and there. Okay, that happens. It happens. American foul brood, that's what the inspector is for. That's what he comes every year to look for. It's never been found here or around. I'm not going to have any increased possibility of having American foul brood. I have an increased possibility of having a ton of mites. Yep. Yeah, we've established that, but that's not their job. You're not required to do that. You're, you're not obligated. That's just a judgment call. That's that's more. That's probably something the Eastern Apicultural Society would say. That goddamn <laughs> weird organization that, that doesn't let people become a master beekeeper if they say anything about tree-free beekeeping. That's strange. That needs to be like talked about. I could picture all those dudes. They're probably all a bunch of like, you know, those 
<laughs> just typical beekeeper guys with a perfect mustache and like and just you look at me just think there's something's in their basement when you look at them i don't know I, I, those beekeepers get on my nerves and uh, let's see i'm going a little off topic i'm gonna put a pin in that one hybrid approach okay it says i'm doing a several year experiment my situation demands a balanced approach yeah the situation is that He's in New Jersey with a bunch of bully psychopaths who will uh, never, he never really finished the sentence. Just told me how absolutely fearful it is to not be a militant treater in New Jersey with the Eastern Apicultural Society. Um, so that's what the situation, that's why this, what the situation is, I guess. Treatment plus low treatment. I'm maintaining highs with two management approaches bees i keep in the training app yeah no one that's totally irrelevant to talk about that you got to treat you know where you're teaching people who are going to be treaters fine no one cares about that my low treatment method as i said at the top of this thing this is the first time i ever heard this low treatment um phrase hives on the property I observe them for problems. When you see problems, intervene. Otherwise, let them go. Well, of course. <laughs> That's, that is saying nothing. That says nothing. That's like saying, I only, I only pull the fire truck up with the hose and blast water on houses if they're on fire, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, oh, that was probably the worst analogy ever, but when when I see problems, diseases, I'm not seeing diseases. It's just about the mites. It's all about varroa mites. Um, intervene, otherwise let them go. Well, well, well why not? That, that That's saying nothing at all. If the see, disease or syndromes begin to emerge, treat the sick. Huh? I'm kind of beating a dead horse here. I'm going to be, I'm going, this has gone on too long. There's no treatment free going on here. Low treatment. Um, oh, here's a square. These concepts keep it from being a treatment free approach. Low treatment continued. Management allowances, fresh queens grafted from survivors. Keep new queens. I don't know. I keep old queens too. Perform splits. Do not allow supreme colonies. And that has nothing to do with treatment-free beekeeping. You can keep your bees, your colonies as big or small as you want to. Um, let them swarm and keep refreshing honeycomb. Um, I try not to let them swarm. I make splits, but if they do, it doesn't piss me off because they land all over the place. I just catch them. Low treatment. Propagate good genetics. Um, keep bringing in new stock. Yeah, I guess. Allow some swarming. So here he's talking about uh, the results after two years. 2022. Uh, year one, 30% loss, 70% made through. Year two, 50-50. Um, God damn, how long is this thing? I did not go this far. <laughs> big bold letters. New Jersey is not on board. The whole fucking state is not on I don't understand. It's not a big state, but how are you going to say what the whole state does? Don't make me move to New Jersey just to piss everybody off. For several reasons, the New Jersey beekeeping scene, the scene, generally does not align with the premise. Well, fuck them. I, I don't care if I'm in Jersey or where I'm at. No one's going to tell me nothing. That shit would be hilarious. The New Jersey bee. <laughs> I don't understand that. That's Imagine giving this class in New Jersey. To a bunch of new people, and some of them want to just don't want to do it the conventional way. So you got the, you got like the New Jersey beekeeping mobsters from the 
Eastern Apicultural Society gonna gonna like bust your knuckles or <laughs> break your fingers? Well, this is a joke. Um, for you, it might require some consideration. You might wish you might wish gauge your tolerance for the lifestyle. Lifestyle. Some simply do not consider the matter worthy of worth discussion. Okay, that's their choice. Others look at it more objectively and consider if they're being a good beekeeper. I'm just being a free person in America and a person who understands selection and understands culling and understands not contributing to <clears throat> a terrible gene pool of honeybees. Let's conclusion. Let's conclude. Um, <clears throat> it's an ever-changing landscape. Treatment approach is still leading. Um, there are promises of new treatment approaches. No, no, I'm not interested in that. Um, oxalic acid and Formic Pro hi hybrid and treatment-free approaches are not as unusual as they used to be. Some of this can be attributed to how treatment approaches are not as foolproof as they once were. I'm basically skimming here. Plan the work, work the plan. Don't really understand what that means. Keep up. Okay, so. So you can download this over at bkcorner.org. <laughs> Beaks that learn about treatment options can be happy. And yeah, hopefully, I mean, that's going to probably be it there. Um, I don't want to go back to the YouTube video and start picking that apart. It's actually kind of long. Um, did I forget anything? I probably forgot a whole bunch of stuff I was going to say. As usual, um, at this time, if anybody, um, I can put some comments up. But there really weren't that many comments. So. Yeah, and there's all kind of people requeening. Um let me get rid of this uh, banner here. How do you hide it? I'll hide it. Bloop. I thought I was going to record something for like the my pod podcast account, but um, no, I ain't putting that. I ain't putting that up there. All right. Well, I went on for an hour and a half. Look at that. Ninety minutes. Probably forgot a ton of stuff. Uh, Kevin will maybe you sit through this. I don't know. Um, if you made it this far, great. If not, <laughs> okay. Uh, and and Kevin's free to come on and, of course, and I don't know. Say it was a bunch of shit that I said. I stink. <laughs> Uh, anybody can come on, of course, unless they're just going to be totally annoying. And we'll have, we'll have a chat. All right. Have a good night, everyone. What time is it? Oh, my God. Almost 11 p.m. Thanks for hanging out. See you on the next one.